uh, for your work. As Senator Thune noted, um, we're, we have to take action here. Um, agricultural exports, and we both are in major, all three of us here, major ag producing states, very important export for our country in so many ways. Um, and ag exports have been particularly hard hit by increased costs and transportation challenge. I think one of our problems here is, yes, we have supply chain problems. We all know that. We all know there's multiple answers, improving the infrastructure, uh, what's going on in the shipping industry, um, a workforce, everything from training people to go into the jobs that we have available now, to wages, to making sure that um, we do immigration reform and um, get some more workers into certain uh, industries. So, but the problem is it's not the same size fits all. At the start of the pandemic, Minnesota ag producers saw a 47% decline in exports. And in the last two years, ag exports have lost, exporters have lost 22% of sales. Uh, meanwhile, ocean carriers have reported record profits from the increased demand for imported goods and higher price for container shipments. Um, and so that's what we're dealing with here, and that's when you step in, because we want the economy to work uh, for everyone, and especially, obviously, for our constituents and those that are feeding the world. Um, Mr. Krug, in your testimony, you note how your company is losing its ability to compete in the global market due to challenges moving freight. Um, do you agree that FMC needs to do more to protect competition? Yeah, so we certainly, you know, it's it's normal market is a competition that takes place. If you're unable to deliver or ship, that end customer is going to get that product from some other part of the world. Exactly. Uh, in the case of popcorn tea with Argentina and Brazil, and and so if we're not able to deliver, if they're not going to say, well, we understand, we'll wait. They're going to try to find that product uh, as competition normally works. They're going to find somewhere else to buy it. So that's where this becomes uh, really exactly. important. I appreciate okay. that. Thank appreciate you. You're doing a good job. Oh, well, thank you. Unsolicited. Uh, remote, but unsolicited. Uh, Mr. Reagan, uh, Reagan, it currently costs seven times uh, more to ship and export from California to China. Uh, than to ship that same product from China to California. Can you speak to some of the challenges with moving freight on land, uh, particularly with transporting empty containers? Um, sure. I, I, and we discussed a little bit of this earlier in terms I of heard, yeah. also having our ability to manufacture them here and have developed our own uh, capacity to be able to meet mm -hmm. some of the challenges we're seeing here in terms of, of uh, container supply. Um, and I, I also want to comment that we, we also agree with, with the comments the Federal Maritime Commission needs to have the authority to, um, to investigate and oversee the statutory requirements uh, that are put in place by that agency. Good. Thank you very much. Um, um, maybe you can take this one as well. The Port of Duluth is the largest and busiest port of the Great Lakes um, with 800 vessels and uh, an average of 35 million tons of cargo per year. Uh, Minnesota, however, has deferred building a portion of the Twin Ports Interchange, a project to replace aging infrastructure and better accommodate freight access uh, because of construction costs. Uh, Mr. Reagan, in your testimony, you note how the Port of Savannah is using inland ports to hold overflow containers. How important as are our inland ports in relieving uh, some of the congestion from the coastal areas? They are extremely important. And I think um, the, other, the other thing that we often find right now in terms of the lack of development in some of these major port issues is, frankly, funding. Uh, funding is a big problem in, in terms of pursuing whether it be more inland port, but also more intermodal facilities. And we've discussed the lack of rail connectivity as one of the major problems, but 60% of ports say that funding is their uh, number one hurdle to, towards uh, addressing some of these problems. So we're very positive about the, uh, the $2.2 billion in the bipartisan bill towards the Port Infrastructure Development Act, and that is uh, really going to go a long way towards the long-term solutions for this. Agree. Um, from a Duluth, Minnesota perspective, agree. Um, Mr. Krug, this will be my last question. While small and medium-sized enterprises account for 98% of U.S. exporters, rural businesses are often located far from transportation hubs, making it difficult for them to access international markets. 
Uh, Senator Hoven and I have introduced a Promoting Rural Exports Act. It actually makes permanent what has been a very successful effort um, to um, have a set group of people working on rural exports and giving rural businesses uh, the expertise they need. And this is based on our experience both in North Dakota and Minnesota. Um, could you talk about the importance of rural businesses having increased access to foreign markets and how it's not the same as um, a multinational corporation, many of them also located in my state, who can uh, employ full-time trade exports in different regions of the world? Sure. Um, well, yeah, transportation obviously is key. Uh, we uh, started out just a few years ago and we put a paved road that's only 1.2 miles long to get to the highway. But uh, that one mile opened up uh, the world. And that ability to be able to reliably ship containers each day was a big step and the state of Nebraska was supportive of that. And so anything that uh, can be done to increase, to improve transportation and ability to get these ag products to the marketplace is, is huge. And, and there's a, the rail, of course, uh, is important to that. That was some of the issues that mm -hmm. have happened too. So the captive great customers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, the rail. Good. I see some of my colleagues are here, so I've over, overdone my questions here. So I want to thank you very much, all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Klobuchar. Senator Lemus. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, my first question is for Mr. Butler. Um, 